Look who's in the man cave. Michael Smith, Jamel Hill, or is it Jamel Hill and Michael Smith? Uh, Have we figured that out yet? <laughs> Your name always comes first for some reason. Only, only because it was his and hers, so it corresponded. Oh. But maybe we should have switched it for the six. Maybe you it's should. Okay. Maybe you should alternate it. Ladies first. Yeah, but, but like each day. Well, we all know who carries the other one here. Yeah, we do. Me, clearly. Yeah, you know uh, the Sports <laughs> Center six. It's SC six with uh, Michael and Jamel at premieres Monday. Actually, it's the six. It should just call it the six. Can you believe that? How many years were they calling it the six internally in yeah. Bristol? Yeah. Well, we just, yeah. now we're taking it publicly. ESPN two. We called it the Deuce. We had an inner office memo that says stop calling it the deuce and yeah. i went really yeah because that's what people still identify it as being the deuce so as you know everybody on campus in the office they call it the six so we're like why don't we just call it the six i like it but unfortunately we have people who think we're copying drake yeah that were born in like 1998 <laughs> and i'm just like hey he did not invent the numeral six just so you know because the six is referring to Toronto and the six. Are you sure that Drake doesn't think he invented the number six? I think his fans think he did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's just I'm glad that we got the opportunity to clear that up because so people won't think we're biting. How know? did this partnership come up? Uh, you know, we just used to spend a lot of time together um, when Jamel would come up and do things like sports reporters or and, you know, I would commute from Massachusetts to do different things. And, uh, you know, we'd hang out and, and realize that uh, a lot of our conversations just had this. They always take an interesting turn to relationships, to life, to, you know, social issues, whatever. And we're like, man, you know, this would be pretty cool for people to hear, we think. Or if nothing else, it'd be fun to work together. So uh, people weren't falling over themselves to put us on television. But uh, Sharita Johnson, shout out to Sharita, uh, entrusted us with a podcast in twenty. 13 after Super Bowl 47 mm -hmm. we started the his mm -hmm. and hers podcast mm -hmm. and four years later here we are but Michael and Tony started out that way you know but they were working both with the Washington Post so you had writers you know obviously one black one white uh different social backgrounds here different opinions love to argue and I remember when Mr. Tony said can you believe they're going to put this on TV? <laughs> and, and he was so nervous about it. He goes, nobody's going to watch this. No one's going to watch this. And I said, if they allow you to be yourself, yeah. then it'll be great. Because if you were around Michael and Tony, they would go at it. Yeah. And then, and then they would stop. Like they, they, they would, that's pretty much how we are. Like yeah. they'd argue and then they'd make up. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if that's the way no, you guys are. Well, we, we actually go back to 2002. Yeah, so we, we met as beat writers. For a long time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny you say that because we were arguing about LeBron and your agreement. I, I heard. I Did you heard. know? It was like we yeah. were just in there arguing <laughs> about it for no, you know. Fundamental disagreements. Yes, we, we, we do have one. But um, now, nah, in, in general, it, you know, it's funny you should say that because, see, optically, um, Tony and Mike are, are different in the sense, as you said, black guy, white guy. But really the same dude. But really, they're the same dude. They're both old, grumpy dudes. Right, exactly. Yeah, they see the world the same way. And <laughs> to some degree, we sort of faced um, a certain stereotype because we're both, like, sort of close in age, you know, both black. And even though there's a gender difference, obviously, I think there was this kind of just automatic assumption that we probably thought the same. But we are, uh, we're like-minded but we think differently, if yeah. that makes sense. Or some would say we share a brain. Yeah. But, you know, but I think that that's the key, because it's the same thing with Keith and I. We, we didn't have much in common. We didn't hang out socially. But when you got on the air, we understood what the other person thought. Mm -hmm. And so you compliment each other without even trying to do that. But we actually do hang out a lot. Right. It's kind of like, it's kind of scary. The other day, Jamel told me that uh, she talks to me more than anybody. And Jamel's in a very committed relationship at the moment. And she says, um, you know, because I always catch her when she's about to take off on a plane. She's like, you always call me when I'm about to take off. And, you know, we talk on the phone more than anybody because it's, and it's not just, you know, in social conversations or, you know, informal conversations about, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? Did you watch this episode of such and such show? We're constantly both thinking about the show and how to improve it. Like, you know, what happened today? What could we do better? What could we do better for tomorrow? Did you see Dan Patrick's show? Did you see how they approach this topic? So we're, we're so dedicated to you know, equally dedicated to improving it until you'll never hear me, you know, going to the media saying my teammate doesn't care. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never do that. My I, don't, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, my vet, my vet works are yes. behind off. But, you know? but having trust with each other is the most important thing you could have. Yeah. Whether it's Greeny and Golick or Tom Jackson, Chris Berman, myself and Keith, there is something about that. That if, if you need something or you need bailed out, if the, you can see it in the other person's eyes of, wait a minute, did I go down a road I didn't need to go? Can you help me get back? Having that trust is, is probably the most important factor that you can have yeah. with a relationship. Because like, you're doing live TV, mm -hmm. and that's different. 
You're doing live TV. Oh, don't we know it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you gotten yelled at from uh, anything that you did on his and hers or? Mm, no, I, no, I didn't get yelled at. I, I, I put myself in timeout the second yeah, time. Yeah, you did. He, so he, I've cussed he's twice. cursed twice on air. I've cussed twice on live TV. Yeah. yeah. What's that all about? I just, I forget I'm on television with her. <laughs> yeah. I we get just lost got a little too the, comfortable. You know, I got a little too comfortable. Yeah. We like, well, the first time I got too comfortable. The second time I was really angry. Uh, and that's, look, I go back 15 years in the business, never did it. I'm not proud of it. I'm not, I'm not bragging about it by any means. The first time it was just caught up in the moment and everybody laughed at it. I was embarrassed and I thought I was going to get suspended. She laughed up behind off I when it happened. Because what you said, you thought you were going to be the first one to cuss. I did. I thought it would be me. The second time we were having a really serious conversation and it, and it kind of slipped out in a, in a moment of anger. And look, the viewers didn't have a problem with it because they understood where I was coming from. And I went to I went to the office. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You <laughs> like, know, he, like, he you self know, I was upset. <laughs> they were like, don't worry about it. But I'm not crazy enough to think that two strikes are that's on my record. Right. And, and I, I can't do that on a six. And I'm mad at him because now I can't curse. No. She right. Can't. So I like if I let one slip, it will probably I'll probably have to to pay for your strikes. Yes. Because then they'll yes. just think that as a unit. Right. It's that as a unit that we're too. just loose. Yeah. I want to talk to you guys about the philosophy of the six and and what is going to be different. Do you feel like you have to make something different? And that you're looking at the six o'clock growing up, watching it, or sports center in general, of what it's supposed to be and the freedom that you guys may have. Also want to ask you about some uh, other things going on, what's going on with LeBron, you know, the social media, the role that it's playing here. Uh, the Carmelo situation. I talked about Brady and Belichick, Phil Jackson and Michael Michael Jordan. What's more impressive mm. with a, uh, a mm. you know, star and a coach combo? Mm. Uh, the role that politics could play at the Super Bowl with uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick asking about Donald Trump, if that does play a role at all. Because we have two teams. One is by design bland. And the other one, I think, is just bland, you know, <laughs> with, without personalities here. Yeah. So we'll continue. They're the uh, new stars of the six. It's uh, Michael Smith, Jamel Hill, or as I like to say, Jamel Hill and Michael Smith. We're back after this. We'll discuss that. It's known as the Six. It'll be uh, Michael Smith, Jamel Hill, and it starts after the Super Bowl, Monday, February 6th at uh, 6 Eastern. I will say, I did question that logic. I would have had you started at the Super Bowl. I think that would have been a better stage for you than... Like the week leading up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think part of the thinking was... um, because they are redesigning the studio in a unique way compared to the other sports centers. I think they wanted kind of our first show to be at home, okay. so to speak. Okay. So, um, but I mean, that's a valid point about, you know, the Super Bowl and the eyes, the attention, the level of guests. Obviously, we know you can get at the Super Bowl a little bit different. Well, we also just ended his and hers like last week. <laughs> it feels that way. <laughs> we were trying to like shut down his and hers the moment this announcement happened. Yeah. But we had to kind of finish that out a little bit. And uh, so we needed as much time as we could to try to get this right. We're not overhauling what we do fundamentally yeah. or philosophically. But there are some adjustments and, you know, new staff and that sort of thing. So we need time to get it right. We want to hit the ground running as best we can. How do you change how do you is it is it subtle changes of, of what you're trying to do or is it going to be no, immediate? I mean, I, was gonna, I guess it just depends on who people think the 6 p.m. sports uh, center viewer is. Yeah, because for us, it won't be a fundamental change because we are bringing this the essence of the same show to the six. Like it won't be a highlight driven show. It will be a conversation driven show. Mm-hmm. So um, is it debate? Um, we were never debate. We were never debate. We were discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there's a difference. Yeah. And what so, is the difference? Well, debate, volume. Well, that's part, that's one <laughs> difference, right? But no, right. it doesn't have to be. Debates don't have to be loud. You De- embrace debate. You hug discussion. Is what you do. <laughs> debate, <laughs> debate suggests that it needs to be a winner or a loser, and we're not up to win or lose when we talk to each other. I'm not trying to show her up. She's not trying to show me up. Yeah. I'm not trying to prove her wrong or vice versa. We're just listening to each other's viewpoints, and we could agree to disagree and move on. So debate just seems like it also it, I think there's a connotation of b- being staged. Debate makes it harder for people to believe that you're authentically disagreeing. Sometimes people will think if there's a debate or you're just saying that to disagree with her because you think that's what we want to see. I think there's more credibility in, 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 in hugging discussion, as you put it. But I was just going to say, yes, how are we going to change? I was going to wait till the end. But, you know, oh, to we say can this. wait. Well, no, no, no. I was to, to say and, and I told this to Jamel and I, and I want to thank you on the show. Uh, one of the first phone calls we got when we, it was announced that I got um, was from a, a number that I didn't have locked in my phone. <laughs> when the show was announced that we were going to take over the six was from you, from Dan Patrick. And I just appreciated you taking the time to do that. Congratulate me and us by extension. He just didn't have your number, Jamel. And, you know, you were among the first 
vet, my vet, one of the first vets of Sports Center to say, don't change. Mike, you, it you was, got here to be doing, honest, it yeah. was a pan style. I didn't mean to call you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hello, who's this? You're like, oh, oh Michael no. Smith. Oh, well, since I got you. you know, um, oh, Mike, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mike, yeah, you know that yes. kid that I had on the show years ago. Remember yeah. we had a conversation, Super Bowl in Detroit? Yeah. And you were asking me what advice I would give to you. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I told you. I was going to say, what did you say? <laughs> I, I, but you were curious and that's what I loved. If you're curious about how do, how do we do, how do I fit? What do we do? What's different? What can we do? What can I do? And I said, you got to get reps. You got to get repetition. You got to be on the air. Yeah. I remember saying that. Right. And this time, do you remember what you said this time? You said, don't, don't let those letters, don't let the, the platform, don't let it change you. No. Don't let them change you. Yeah. Like, do you. And here's the good news. And this will blow your mind as somebody who, you know, obviously, you know, was there at a different time. They have no designs on changing us. The fact that they asked us to do this, and that that's the key part of it. This was not our plan. Um, you know, we were about a year out from our contract being up. We know they liked us and, and wanted us to keep doing our thing. We were of the mentality that we were just going to be his and hers. And, and what were the things that we needed to improve that? And um, the way it, it just kind of happened was just, it was very... It caught us by surprise. I mean, we were literally standing in the middle of the ESPN newsroom, and Rob King, who oversees Sports Center, walked past us. Then he doubled back and said, "Hey, you know, I got an idea. They told me you guys would say no, and I just thought I would just tell you what I was thinking anyway." And he was like, "What do you think about hosting you guys hosting the Six O'clock Sports Center?" Now, keep in mind, we were going to fill in at various points just to do it, just for more publicity for our show, expanding our brand, doing something different. Just as fill-ins. And we were like, yeah, you, you know, we, we, we agreed to that. Uh, we would fill in. He was like, no, no, no. I mean, being the, the host. And we actually started laughing because we were like, we're not anchors. That's not what we do. And he was like, and then he went into a great pitch and a great sale and said, no, no, we don't want you to be what, you know, people have imagined the product to be. Because SportsCenter has evolved a lot. A lot of people have maybe not noticed, but it has, they have moved away from highlights in a lot of, I mean, the morning is different. It depends on what time you see what they've done with Scott Van Pelt. Yeah. You know, they, they have really embraced a, a huge culture change. So he, the more he started talking and giving us the creative freedom, very similar to what we had on his and hers. Um, as soon as he left and, you know, we had agreed to meet with him in a more thorough meeting or a bigger meeting. And Mike and I were like, that really sounded good. That sounded like something we could do. So just by the fact that they sought us out and recognized the things that we that we done, let us know right away that they were ready for a abrupt change. It's good. It's good. And and I think you can also report on something in real time and then discuss something in real time. Mm -hmm. So you're almost going to be the person who reports on it and then the analyst who discuss it, which yep. which I think if you're and able we'll to do that. we'll still deliver your news. We're not going to ignore breaking news. I mean, we because we can switch – at a moment's notice, into anchor mode. Jamel jokingly says that we're not anchors, but we we we're pretty proficient at that as well. So. Scott had me on his first show. So. Oh, we remember because yes, right, we, I love you know, the name. I, didn't know. I love Steely, the visitor. Would you come through? But I mean, that's been done yeah, already. You don't want yeah, yeah, we can't. Yeah, you don't want to copy. We copy and break. It would have been. It would have been nice if you asked, but no, no. I like a faux ask. Would have been nice, Mike. Well, I just figured. No, no, but that's okay. All right, that's all right. No worries. Thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> all right, a couple of uh, sports things. Now, uh, Donald Trump's role with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, if you guys were covering this as, uh, let's say, print media, how important would this be? Or if you're reporters covering this, or you were doing your first sports center, how important would this be? That topic, if Brady's already talked about it, Trump's talked about it, Belichick's talked about it, Robert Kraft's talked about it, is it important at all leading up to Super Bowl? Um, I think it's in, despite what Tom Brady says about he doesn't understand why it's a big deal. And I think he's being a little oblivious, probably on purpose, given that the Patriots, they try to be as uninteresting as possible. And he doesn't want this story to go any further. I mean, the fact of the matter is we have a very polarizing person in office and that person does not resist any opportunity to bring up the fact that he knows Tom Brady. Yes. Right. And that he knows Bill Belichick and they're good friends. And or they went to the inaugural ball. Exactly. And um, I think that it is. Uh, Should I, it play a role? When you mean to play a role in the coverage? Yeah. No, not if you're covering football. OK. Right. But, you know, look, but it's it, discussion worthy. It's discussion worthy. And, yeah. and Brady say almost being defensive and saying if he just said, you know, what, guys, I'd rather keep that relationship private. 
But to go and say, I don't understand why this is a big deal, and to avoid it and say, well, wait a second, man, we're all judged by the company we keep. Yeah. There are certain people, especially in this day and age, you wouldn't take a photo with. You know, like if, if um, I'm trying to think of uh, somebody that's infamous right now. And I, I understand he's, you know, the, the president of the United States, and that's different. So I'm not trying to, this is not an apples to oranges comparison. I'm sure people will hate me for saying this, but Tom Brady wouldn't take a picture with Greg Hardy right now. No. Because of the things that are associated with Greg yeah. Hardy. And I understand that Donald Trump has not done the things that Greg Hardy has been accused of doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. However, Donald Trump has said some things and perhaps done some things that people find morally questionable. All right. So if you, if that's your guy and you have a hat in your locker that says make America great again, and you're hanging out with him and he's shouting you out, y'all are writing letters to him and that sort of thing. People want to know that's your boy because you're judged by the company you keep. So are you like-minded in certain ways? Do you agree with him on some of these polarizing policies that he's putting forth or some of the things that he's said? No. Is that what is that how you think? Because Tom Brady, to this point, the flake gate aside in some people's mind, which that's a whole nother conversation, has had a pretty pristine image when it comes to character. But also the Super Bowl is covered by mainstream media, TMZ. Oh, they're ask. And, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it may not be normal mainstream sports outlets that right. will ask this to try to get a reaction. Right. Um, also, when uh, it, it, if I said Brady and Belichick, Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson, better, better uh, star coach combo, is it a fair comparison or would you have to wait uh, about nine more days? I think it's fair now. I think the only issue is it's just two different sports, and and that's kind of why I lean to more toward Brady and Belichick, just because you know Michael had another all time great player in Scotty and another all time great player. You would lean towards Brady and Belichick as the best, yes, coach, just because of the turnover around them, just because of how hard it is yeah. in this day yeah. and age to keep. You know, I mean, the it's offensive only five line, guys on the floor. Yeah, the offensive line. I mean, you got Rodman, you got Pippen, you know, you got Phil, obviously. The offensive line, is, they move in and out. The wide receivers come and go. I mean, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when people wondered whether losing Gronk would slow them down? You know, so <laughs> yeah. I, I, in the defense, guys have come and gone, and yet they've been the constant. So I'd have to lean toward Brady and Yeah, Belichick. I would have to lean toward them, too. Just And, and look, this may be un, a little unfair, but I think how Phil has uh, handled the Knicks is, is on his record. And... No, uh, I that think is that is unfair. on his record. I do, and uh, because Bill Belichick has personnel control, right? Is Cleveland on Bill Belichick's record? Um, no, but I think it's enough distance from that uh, to prove that it wasn't just him. But isn't he the last coach to actually have like gone to the playoffs I think with the Browns? Did once with the Browns? I think, I'm sorry. I think, I think, did I think Bush Davis Bush, go? Yeah, did the, he? I think the new Browns. Okay. Did it, I, I may be tripping. Okay, I thought, I thought it was Belichick. Like a nine, nine, two. Like a nine yeah. and seven year or something. I okay. Think they went. Nevertheless. Um, I, I think given that we're in the free agency era in, in the NFL and how hard it is uh, to keep a team together and the fact that he's won with so many different pieces and in so many different ways, he's a he's a, a, a I'm not saying this to disrespect Phil because I think he's a tactician in his own right. But Bill Belichick is truly a tactician in the game. And certainly, I think at this point, the best coach in NFL history. But also, uh, I look at it as Michael was the best player in the game. Tom Brady is not the best player in the game. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. Which is hmm. it, it? It it's it's apples. So to, who's, who's the best player of the game to you right now? Just curious. Who would you say? Um, it is? I don't consider. I would have a hard time saying he's the best player. Okay. Um, he could be the most valuable, but you know, is is what JJ, is it about him that doesn't make him the best player? Just I mean, and, I, and, and without I, putting the premium of the position aside, well, I, I'm I looking that. at Jordan with what he did offensively and defensively. He, oh. he had to play both ways. Yeah, right. right. So, so Brady is just, he's he's playing offense. Right. Jordan would guard you. He was a Hall of Fame defender as well. But, I mean, the sports are different in what we yeah, ask. I see what you're but saying. if you're saying somebody is the best um, by far and away, Matt Ryan's going to be the MVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have to be so far, like you said, J.J. Watt, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you. J.J. Watt at one point was so far and away the yes. best defensive lineman among his like Lawrence peers. Taylor was like, the yeah. best player in be the distance. game. He was you could most... argue Rodgers or Brady at quarterback. You could argue yes. Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson at running back. Yeah. You'd argue Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham at wide receiver. With you know, but certain positions, guys are just far and away the better players. So I see what you're saying about Jordan. It's had so much distance between him and everybody else. Uh, we'll do this quickly with social media. The passive aggressive nature of LeBron James. Ugh. Don't get me started. <laughs> this was mostly this was his most aggressive though. Yeah, because usually he would have subtweeted it. It was a, it was aggressive, and then it was passive. Like he he's usually passive aggressive. This time he was aggressive passive. Then he walked it back a little <laughs> bit there, right? Yeah. So he's changing it up a little bit. Look, here. my issue with it, Dan, wasn't wasn't his constant need and drive to get better. I respect that. 
I think the manner in which he did it was wrong. And I think at this point, given the fact that that Cleveland, they spent more money than NBA, any NBA team in the last three years. They lost $40 million last year. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's lost 40 lost okay. okay. All right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. Okay. I'll okay. I know what you're going to say to that. I know what you're going to say to that. Okay. All right. So they have, to me, held up their end in a lot of ways. All right. Um, Tristan Thompson, despite all his limitations, they paid him in part because that's LeBron's deal. Yeah. Yeah. He okay? got maxed out. He got maxed out. Right. And we can debate whether or not he's a max player. Right. He's not. He is. I want to be the one to say <laughs> There's it. There's no debate. Okay, there is. Yeah. Just in case somebody, okay. some Tristan uh, Thompson stands well. Chloe Kardashian would okay. say. Okay, so all that be given that I think they deserve the right or earn the right for LeBron to just have that conversation in private. Yeah. We didn't need to know that. And oh, by the way, it's like, so you're going to convince me like the 15th man is going to be the difference between y'all winning a title? You just won a title, man. You all just right, Mike, won one. You're, you're no, get the I, final. I just, no, I just laugh because it's kind of similar to what we talked about in your green room. Yeah. It's like nobody wants to hear rich people complain <laughs> about the tax break that they didn't get or how to, you know, stay rich. <laughs> and it's like, you know, people say, oh, we lost, like CEOs, we lost a million dollars last year. No, you didn't make the million that you projected <laughs> you were going to make. You didn't lose a million dollars. Like, people out there trying like, to make Like, he does spend $100. more than any other owner. Well, but, and that's to me the interesting thing. Whether you, appreciate him or you know don't appreciate him going public with it or not and i'm sure he has had private conversations he's looking at there's an empty roster spot on the back end and there's two trade level trade exceptions that they have not used taken advantage of the interesting thing about the story i think it was brian windhorse at our place at espn if there was an understanding between he and dan gilbert that money was never going to be an object and i get that they spent more than anybody the last three years in record-setting payroll but if you were never going to cut corners and money was not going to be an object that's interesting because now he has maybe an out to say you went back on our agreement. Over the 15th man. Interesting. Maybe his son could be the 15th man. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Smith, Jamel good. Hill, Sports Center, 6 o'clock. It'll be uh, premiering Monday, February 6th at uh, 6 Eastern. I wish you nothing but success. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Again, thank you for the call. You're so welcome. That was one of the highlights of this entire process. You're, you're welcome. We'll, we'll carry on your tradition as best we can. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.